coffee shop. I can finally pay off the month's rent. Right, okay. I'm gonna help you with this. You wanna be more of a weeb? Only fans, right? Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be having a look at the data mine which mainly focuses on the third season of the Battle Pass. There's also a few other things in there which is pretty cool and obviously this is a data mine from Zabby uh, so make sure to uh, have a look at the link in the description. Make sure to thank Zabby as well because obviously the work that he does is incredibly important to give us information on some upcoming features when it comes to War Thunder. Uh, the other things that are available in this data mine, instead of just the Battle Pass stuff, which we will have a look at, it does talk about the vehicles from the Battle Pass and also the challenges which will be available. But the other things are there is a new VE Day decal, uh, so Victory in Europe Day decal. Victory in Europe is the 8th of May, and uh, since it will be happening next Saturday, my guess is that this will be a weekend event where you'll probably have to play three games or something to be able to get the decal. It does look really nice. It's known as the Warrior Liberator, and it is a beautiful look on a statue. Then also we have some new skins. Uh, the A5M4 gets the camouflage of the third the uh, 13th Naval Air Group of Japan Naval Aviation and then also the Key 61 ICO gets a camouflage of the first prototype. There's also going to be a new title which is Air Test and Evaluation Department. I'm wondering if that's got something to do with bug reporting or something like that. We'll have to see uh, as it goes forward. Anyway, let's get into some of the Battle Pass stuff. So the data mine has all four vehicles that will be available for the next Battle Pass. Obviously, these are unconfirmed right now, uh, just to let you know. But two of them have already been confirmed through dead blocks. So I think it's fair to say that the other two are definitely, um, let's just say, a higher percentage chance of coming. I want to cover my tracks, basically. So the first one, obviously, is the M6A2E1, the US heavy tank, which was announced today in a dead blog. Um, hopefully all of these vehicles are premiums, by the way. And then the second one is the P39Q25, uh, which is a French vehicle, or it's going to be for France, even though it's uh, built by America. It was used by the French, especially during the Second World War, in quite a large way, and it's nice to get another premium for France. The other two are pretty special, though. So the naval vehicle that will be available is the Voroshilov cruiser, and this is a Soviet cruiser. And what it is, is it's a Project 26, which means that it's a Kirov-class cruiser. Now, we do actually have the Kirov already in-game at Rank 4, the 1941 variant of it. And we also have a Project 26 BIS machine as well, the Maxim Gorky, which was actually for a previous event, which is also a Kirov class. So this is very similar to something we already have in the game in two separate variants. But the things that you have to understand is when it comes to shipbuilding, you know, you're, you're not going to get something absolutely bizarre, you know, out of out there, um, apart from maybe if they start doing like coastal vessels uh, for these battle passes. This has three Three triple mounted 180 millimeters, six single mounted 100 millimeter guns, six single mounted 45s, four 12.7s, and also some torpedoes, mines, and depth charges. So very similar to what you will have seen in other vehicles. Uh, it's not really going to give anything new uh, to the game, but what it should give, hopefully, if it's a premium vehicle, which it should be, um, it will give the uh, USSR a little bit of a boost in getting into those higher echelons and getting to those heavy cruisers and also to those battleships. Instead of having to pay for a premium, you'll be able to grind one out in the battle pass, which is really nice. There isn't really anything else about this machine. It, it follows a similar story to a lot of the Kirov class cruisers used during World War II by the Soviet Union and also into the Cold War. It was used in the siege of Odessa 
Odessa, um, if you know about that. Men of War Red Tide actually does a pretty good retelling of it uh, in game form, and unfortunately in 1941 it was massively damaged by German bombers, and then in 1942 it came back and was able to be used in the siege of Sevastopol and around Novorossiysk as well in 1943. It was heavily involved in the Second World War and was able to get the Order of the Red Banner on the 8th of July 1945 and was used until 1973 when it was sold for scrap afterwards. It did also go through a few refits, uh, which are kind of interesting. It had a, a refit in uh, 1954, which completely changed the vehicle uh, and made it more of a test bed for missile development. And I'm just wondering if we get that one into the game, it may actually be a little bit different. But my guess is we'll just get the standard Second World War variant. And the fourth vehicle is probably the most interesting of all. It's also for another minor nation, for Italy, and it is the Toldi 2A. So we have two minor nation vehicles in the P-39Q and the Toldi, and two major nation ones in the Voroshilov and also the M6A2E1. The Toldi 2A is actually a Hungarian vehicle, and uh, it's been talked about for a long time that Italy obviously will get some of the minor Axis nations in the Second World War to built to bolster their lineups, you know. You have the IR-81C, for example, you know, the BF-109 of, uh, I believe it's Romanian descent or Hungarian descent in the tech tree as well. And one of the things that's cool about Hungary is they actually have a ton of really interesting designs, especially for ground forces, which would be lovely to see in the game. Now, the 38M Toldi was actually used by Hungary and Romania during World War II. It is based off of the L60, which of course is the Landsverk uh, tank from Sweden, uh, which we also have uh, variants of in the game. And basically what it is, is they took the base of the L60, uh, the hull and the turret, and then they modified it and used it from 19, uh, well, 19, I believe it was uh, 41 or 1939 to 1945, uh, all the way until the end of it, uh, which is pretty cool. They made a bunch of different variants. The specific one that we're going to be getting in the battle pass is the Toldi 2A, and this was a modification in 1942. Basically, before 1942, all of the Toldis only had access to a 20 millimeter Solothurn anti-tank rifle, and uh, then in the Toldi 2, they uh, upgraded its armor, uh, basically gave it a little bit of a thicker front, and then the 2A, they replaced the 20 millimeter gun with a 40 millimeter gun. So the vehicle that we should get should be uh, armed with a 40 millimeter and also have a little bit of upgraded armor unfortunately i'm pretty sure they didn't upgrade the engine so it'll be a little bit slower um, but overall the 40 millimeter at let's say around about rank 2 should be pretty deadly especially if it can fire a, a bunch of different rounds uh, i don't think it'll get the apds but we'll see uh, from the 40 will probably just get standard AP just a very quick firing gun very similar to the two pounders that you find from the British and should be pretty nice one of the things that's also interesting about the Toldi is they made a prototype which I actually find really interesting they basically took off the turret and used the hull and mounted a 75 millimeter pack 40 on it uh, which I think will be awesome to see and I'm sure we will at some point so yeah this is an L60 with a 40 millimeter with a bit more armor used by the Hungarians and also uh, used by the Romanians in a captured sense so we'll see it come to the game I'm happy with it hopefully it means we'll get more Hungarian stuff going forward so the next part of the data mine is for the challenges that'll be around for season three. There's also a placeholder timeline for this as well from the 12th of May, and it goes all the way till the 28th of July. Uh, so basically you'll get the two and a half months. That seems pretty standard for these battle passes. Uh, so not too much of a surprise. I believe the challenges in season two are definitely harder than season one, um, but it's 
seems like the majority of people got them done. Even the depth charge kill, um, which eluded a lot of people for a long time, seems to have mainly been done now. The first challenge for Season 3 is just a simple one. 150 kills and or assists uh, when it comes to air, ground or naval. Uh, so that should be easy. You know, just play the game easy as. The next one is three wins with first place. That should also not be too bad, especially since you have two and a half months to do it. 10 kills with 150 millimeter or larger guns. Uh, so this is kind of annoying. It's also in ground AP or RB. Uh, so basically the big, uh, the big, the big uh, machines with the large caliber. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of FV4005s around the place. Then we have 5 kills with 800 kilo or heavier bombs, and also 5 kills with 200 kilo or heavier rockets. I kind of like this, you know, ordnance options, and it's only 5 kills, so it's not a huge amount uh, that you have to use. I'm definitely going to use something like the B6 um, or the B7 for this, uh, probably the B7 with the 800, or the kicker, uh, which would be really nice too. You also need 75 battles played with 70% or higher activity and getting at least one kill. Once again, that's a time one, really not that hard. 30 kills with coastal fleet vessels using 75mm or larger weapons. Uh, so... That one's actually going to be a bit rough um, because a lot of coastal machines, their meta is like 20 millimeters or 40 millimeters, mainly 40 millimeters. So you're going to have to find ones with big donkey guns. Um, I'm probably going to try the flower class. Uh, if Remember, this will probably be rank three or up as well. So that might not even be possible. Uh, challenge seven is 15 kills with aircraft using 35 millimeters or larger guns. Uh, so basically big guns uh, once again 15 kills not a huge amount I think this is fine as long as it isn't something crazy like a hundred kills uh, 15 kills is is okay for a specific weaponry 50 wins with 70 percent or higher so once again play the game 50 kills with heavy tanks so that shouldn't be too hard there's plenty of nice heavy tanks in the game and then you get the obligatory 30 kills and or assists with the current battle pass reward vehicles uh, so that comes later on that's challenge 10 um, in the list uh, so that shouldn't be too bad and then also earn professional award 20 times uh, so we've talked about this one before basically you just get through uh, you just get uh, with a single spawn uh, x amount of kills and you get the professional award so as long as you get more than three kills with one spawn you'll be able to get you know the professional award and it's only 20 times so it's not a huge amount um, if you've done it in the previous battle passes you'll be able to do it in this this seems to be a recurring challenge which they are pretty happy with 30 kills using light cruisers and or heavy cruisers and or battle cruisers and or battleships so you're gonna have to grind out some cruisers or heavy cruisers um if you don't have them uh so maybe work on that now same with the coastal fleet stuff with the 75 millimeters i know a lot of you guys uh don't have <laughs> the these machines and have complained about naval challenges in the past this is your early warning siren going off uh letting you know that get some of them at least researched uh, so you can have a go with them then challenge 13 is 30 player controlled tank kills 30 player controlled naval kills and 30 player controlled aircraft kills so similar to ones that we have in this current season of the battle pass and the survivor award five times that's kind of annoying I think you need to get like at least five kills um, and uh, survive the battle so don't die. I'm actually going to check that uh, real quick because I'm not entirely sure um, if I'm correct on that. I might be completely wrong. I'm just talking completely out of my backside for you. Uh, the next one, which is on offer, is set 30 player control vehicles on fire. Uh, this should actually probably be the easiest done in uh, naval, um, since you set stuff and fire in naval very easily as, uh, with the HE. Survivors haven't lost a single vehicle, whether aircraft or ground, whilst destroying more enemy vehicles than any other player who have not lost theirs. So it should be at least five enemies destroyed or more. So so basically terror of the sky but you can't die um is <laughs> is basically the way to put it and i'm sure you can do that in naval too then uh, the last challenge is 10 kills while being in a captured zone which will be 
be in ground or naval that you can get that done. Now, I've never liked those tasks um, because I, I feel like it forces me to play a certain way. But once again, it's only 10 kills. The This battle pass here, to me, um, the challenges just seem really easy. I don't know about, you know, your thoughts about it, but... Generally, the only one which is going to be a bit rough is the high caliber ones for the naval coastal stuff. And that's really about it. I think Season 2's Battle Pass is actually a little bit harder than this one. So maybe they've taken it back a notch uh, with that. They're probably still working out, you know, how far they want to push it with these things. I think it'll be all good. But that's all the information for today um, from the data mine. Once again, thank you to Zabby for um, putting this together for us. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank BRFC, Swollen Ostrich, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe A, Conte Baraka, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez B. Young, Lafouche, Barine, and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.